just think they're neat. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à une autre vidéo sur le canal YouTube Our Own Devices. Je suis Gilles Messier et aujourd'hui, on continue notre série sur les couteaux historiques avec un couteau très bien connu dans les anciennes colonies françaises, le Duc Duc. So, this was designed in 1929 by one Gaspard Cognet of the French couteliers Cognet, Antoine et Gaspard, today MC Cognet, based in the French knife-making capital of Thiers, or if you speak Occitan, Thierne. So, Cognet developed this knife as a simple and affordable working man's utility knife for export to the French colonies specifically the Pacific colonies of Melanesia, what is today Fiji, Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea, New Caledonia, and the Torres Strait Islands. And to add a little bit of local flavor, he named it the Duk Duk after a Melanesian spirit god worshipped by the Tolai people of New Britain in Papua New Guinea. Now, Duk Duk is the subject of a secret society which is open only to men and which involves dressing in elaborate costumes and dancing in order to invoke Duk Duk as well as his female counterpart, Tubuan. And as the story goes, Kanye copied the image of the Duk Duk dancer that is stamped on the side of the knife from an illustrated dictionary. Now, unfortunately, the Melanesian market was not as profitable as Kanye had hoped, but When these knives made their way to France's North African colonies, particularly Algeria, there they sold very, very well. And soon you could find these knives all over the French Empire, including North and Sub-Saharan Africa, Lebanon, and French Indochina. And it was in North Africa that this knife came to the attention of elements of the French Armée d'Afrique, including the French Foreign Legion, who eventually adopted this as their official pocket knife. And... In 1939, Algeria adopted it as its official national pocket knife. Now, this knife became particularly infamous during the Algerian War of Independence from 1954 to 1962, where it was used by elements of the FLN, the Front Libération Nationale, the Algerian Independence Front, who used knives like these to commit assassinations and mutilations. They would use this to kill or cut the noses off of fellow Algerians that they suspected of assisting the French colonial authorities. And what they would often do was to hammer in the sides of the handle in order to lock the blade in place and prevent it from folding. And when France eventually lost the Algerian war and a lot of the French settlers, les pieds noirs, returned to France, they brought these knives with them and they became very popular in metropolitan France as well. So, a small knife with a big history. So, let's actually have a closer look at this and see how it is constructed. So, this is a simple slip joint knife. It has a mild carbon steel blade to make it easier to sharpen. It is cut in a Turkish clip pattern and has some decorative arabesques and the name Duk Duk and made in France etched on one side of the knife. The handle is very simple. It's made from a single piece of folded sheet metal, and it has the figure of the Duc Duc dancer as well as Modèle de Poésie, trademark, stamped on one side. And other than that, there aren't a lot of other parts, just a rivet at the front, a rivet at the back, a lanyard loop, and a powerful spring. So this is a slip joint knife, meaning that there's no locking mechanism to keep the blade in place. Rather, that is done by the spring. And this has a half-fold position as a safety feature to stop the knife from accidentally folding onto your fingers. And so you need a little bit of extra pressure to get it to fold up completely. So very simple and robust. Now over the years, MC Cogne came out with several different variations on the basic Duke Duke pattern, the original pattern being dubbed Le Sorcier or the Sorcerer. So for example, there was the Tiki model, which had the image of a Polynesian Tiki idol stamped on the handle. There was the El Baraka model, which substituted the sorcerer or the tiki for the Tuareg cross of Agadez. And these were specifically designed for export to predominantly Muslim countries, such as Algeria, because in Islam, it is generally considered idolatrous to depict living beings in art. And finally, there's the écureuil or squirrel pattern, which was designed for sale in France. And this has a nickel plated handle with the image of a squirrel stamped onto it and a spear point instead of a Turkish clip blade. 
There are also three different sizes of Duke Duke currently sold, with the blade lengths being 2 and 7 8 inches, or 7.3 centimeters, 3 and an eighth inch, or 8 centimeters, and 4 and 3 quarter inches, or 12 centimeters, with the largest size being known as Le Géant, or the Giant. And you can also get Duke Dukes in a number of different colors and finishes applied to the handles. So as I said at the beginning of the video, the Duke Duke is still manufactured to this day by the very same firm of MC Cognier, which is a very traditionalist and conservative company to the point that it is actually run by the grandson and the great-grandson of Gaspard Cognier, the original designer of the Duke Duke. And they make the Duke Dukes using the same methods as they did in 1929, entirely by hand. And the fact that these are made by hand and not by automated machinery, yet remain very affordable, you can pick one of these up for around $20 to $30, really speaks to the elegance of the original design. It's a very well-designed little knife and one with a surprisingly interesting history. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on another video or look at yet more knives and tools and other fascinating devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jean Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.